You're watching the Phantom X2 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so I'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the recycled plastic fiber back. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover which are the light grey color lines as well as the NFC antenna which runs around the cameras and the quad LED flash. Now the graphite film can be peeled off and the graphite film helps to transfer heat. At this point, the battery cables can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. There is a white and black coaxial cable on the top right side of the board that can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding on the main board that needs to be removed. On the main board, there's a 50 megapixel retractable telephoto lens, a 13 megapixel wide, and a 50 megapixel primary lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone located on top, and a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also some graphite film over these shields. Looking at the other side of the board, we can see the 32 megapixel front facing camera, and located on the top corner there's a dual LED flash, as well as a proximity sensor on the other corner. There's some copper tape on the back shields, as well as a lot of thermal paste. With the shield cover removed and the copper tape peeled back, we can see more thermal paste underneath on the chips, as well as the RAM and processor, and the ROM or storage. Now to remove the battery, there is an adhesive pull tab provided on the top right corner. However, these type of pull tabs usually tend to rip or tear, so I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the sides of the battery, and let it sit there for about 30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 5160mAh battery. Here's a better look at the speaker assembly. And there's a rubber gasket and a mesh filter over the speaker opening. There's also a small antenna board that the white coaxial cable is connected to on the side of the speaker. This flex cable connects the main board to the charger port board, and this flex cable connects the main board to the sub board. The flex cable for the screen is also connected to the sub board, so if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, and then remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly as well as the speaker assembly itself, 
at which point you would disconnect the screen cable, this flex cable, and the black coaxial cable. You will then remove the Phillips screw which is holding on the subboard and remove the subboard, and then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off. Apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid-frame and reassemble the phone. Taking a closer look at the subboard, we can see a rubber gasket around the screen connector and a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker. And here's a look at the SIM reader on the other side. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the charger port board which needs to be removed. The fingerprint reader is still attached underneath the charger port board, so this board needs to be carefully pulled out and lifted over so we can disconnect the fingerprint reader. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port, and the primary microphone is located here. Once these flex cables are peeled back, as well as the protective film, we can see a thin copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard. The vibrator motor is located here and it's held down with some adhesive. Same goes for the fingerprint reader. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located here. If you need to replace that, you'd have to lift up this black bracket from the frame and then peel up the flex cable and pull it out. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.